Hello. Hello. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to find my, <laughs> my ear. I think my um I think I sound better when I what? Are these dead? Well, I won't sound better because they don't, they're not even sharp. So <laughs> can you hear me okay? Because somebody has complained that my zooms don't sound good when I'm on them. I can hear you. Me. Awesome. How are you feeling, Erin? I am really pregnant. <laughs> I know. I saw your photo with the paint. I thought that was so fun. Oh, thanks. I remember you telling me that day. You're like, no one knows. It was super early. I mean, it was December. Yeah, yeah. I I think my conception date is somewhere around November 9th to 12th. It was early days. I was in like, you know. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to tell people right at the beginning. Yeah, you know, and I'm feeling so terrible. And not a lot of people are like, "Why can't she drink?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the not being able to eat um, the the raw the tuna. Oh, that's right. And the not drinking, just basically in a group full of women, it just gives you away. Yeah, yeah, that's so. Yeah, fun. yeah. that's aw Yeah, that's so fun. And you're having a boy, right? It's a boy. Oh, do you have a name? We're floating a few. Yeah. I'm sure your husband's pretty artistic with names. Is that? Yes. I mean, he, he's, he was really good at saying no to all of my suggestions. <laughs> and I'm coming up with a few like truly bizarre ones that yeah. I just, you know, would like never, yeah. would never do that to a person. I know, you're like, this kid has to go to school, honey. <laughs> yeah. That was his last name, Bigger, too? Okay. Right. How do you pronounce your last name? Oh, mine is Wigger. His is Lebo. Is his Wigger? Is his last name Wigger, too? No, he's a Lebos. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm keeping my, my father passed away last oh. year. And yeah. I just, and I actually have never... I don't know it. Maybe if I married someone who had like the most beautiful last name in the world and I was just dying to have it, you know, but I took my last name as my middle name, but it's not, it's just my dad asked me to. And so I'm Susan short green. It's totally stupid on my passport. I'm like short green Susan. I have a girlfriend <laughs> who's bird Vogel. Oh. <laughs> Vogel in German is bird, so it's basically yeah. bird bird. <laughs> my mom has two friends that are Mary Carey, and I guess there's a whole Mary Carey society of these women that get stuck with the name Mary Carey. I'm like, <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, and then I had a friend named J.R. Ewing back in the in eight in six eighth mm -hmm. grade, which of course, if you grew up at our time, he was on the show, and I was like, oh, that's gotta stink. <laughs> And he wore a shirt that said, I shot J.R. Ewing. <laughs> oh, but yeah. But yeah, names are hard. Um, 
we adopted our first two. So we had to do it really quickly because we picked them up and we're like, we have to go file paperwork. They're already born. They were, one was brand new and one was six weeks. So we had to figure that out. And then our son, I was pregnant with, of course. And I remember my husband and I did not agree on anything. And um, I wanted Mason. I wanted 3M because I had Mackenzie, Madeline, and I wanted, I was like, oh, we'll have Mason. It'll be great. And he's like, I don't like that name. Yeah. And going, so? <laughs> and? <laughs> yeah. So it's so funny. Now he's 19 and his, his name is Connor. And I'm like, oh, he's totally Connor. Oh. And everyone gets whipped out by the middle name, right? They're like, well, no one cares after they're born. So yeah, it's all, ours are all family names. Like it's either my husband or my girls both have their, my mother-in-law and my mom's name. So I'm like, yeah, so, but it is, it, names are hard. And then if you tell people, I remember telling someone, I'm like, I like the name Kennedy. And they're like, ew. I like awful. Kennedy. <laughs> they're like, yeah. horrible name. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to tell anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Our I was like, what about Stephanie? And I'm like, no. No. You know, it's like, you know, it's just so if people are so tied to, I'm like, Stephanie slapped me in sixth grade, mom. Yeah, it's very yeah. emotional. People are just pre-associate. And if they knew someone that they didn't like with a certain name, it's, it's you know, it's out. That's so funny. Julie! There she is. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you, mom? Oh, good, you know. Oh, I should go change my background. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna change my background. It's my best photo I was taken by one of the girls on our trip. She took it of me at the Hilton. I oh, nice. And yeah, they totally staged me up there and everything. Let's see if, I, let's see if it works. If not, I have another photo. Let me get another I've not, This never works really well for me because I'm kind of a dork with it. I usually give about five minutes to let people get on. Let's see how this works. I miss Alexis Butler. I know you're on mute. I'm not on camera, but I see you. I know. Okay, so choose. Um, okay. Hello, Miss Julie Doyle. How are you? I am fabulous. How are you and the kiddos? Oh, we're good. Good. They're big. I bet. Just happens overnight, Thanks. doesn't it? I know. Are you staying busy? <laughs> Insanely busy. I, I, it is crazy right now. <laughs> um, Susan, you're a little sideways. <laughs> oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that didn't turn out the way I thought. <laughs> I'm going to go change that again. I'll get another there one. Um, <laughs> we'll just keep changing backgrounds. Guy looks beautiful. Though. I don't think they turn out that well. Sometimes you become see-through. Um, yeah. But I'm like, I do have a great photo because we had beautiful weather there and it is, um, I'm not just saying this because Aaron's on here. It really is a beautiful resort. Um, I thoroughly loved it. I, you know, I, you know, I'm very picky about which resorts I want to work with. Now that doesn't mean that people can't go to other resorts, but I was like, oh, it was so pretty. Um, and we had beautiful weather while we were there too. Um, Perfect. Let me go try to find this. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. So you know, I weren't up on the how familiar is everyone with Tahiti as a destination in general? I would say I see beautiful pictures. That's it. That's all yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to someone else today and I said this. I go, you know, I get a lot of people that go, oh, I don't want to go to Bora Bora. Or uh, well, maybe Maria. And I'm like, I think you miss out if you don't if you have time to go to both. I think I would go to both. Um, they're so yeah. different. Yeah. Bora is gonna tack on thousands, you know, oh, big quite time. a lot just, big off, time. Uh, you know, so, but if you go all the way out to French Polynesia, it's hard not to, you know, and there's, Morea and Bora Bora is so different, such different experiences. So just let me know if you guys want more or less information on the destination. Um, you know, I tend to be kind of focused on our resort, but I'm also happy to do the best I can to offer more general questions, to answer more general questions. Well, and yeah, well, I'll give it another two minutes. I'd say this, um, because I sold it for a long time and I learned a lot while I was there. And it is a different feel on both. Um, and there is, 
so much that I think I, I really, I know you tack on. I mean, I think the idea that people say is you get this idea of that overwater bungalow. And it's funny because like I said, at your hotel, I had, I, it, was, it was like one of my favorite rooms, the garden with the uh, pool. And I almost put people there almost all the time because I'm like, it's so private. The room was huge and great air conditioning. <laughs> Yeah, the was great, and I was close to everything, and private, very friendly island. It was really easy to get to. Um, my profile photo—I don't know if you have seen it. It's with my hair sticking straight out, and it's where um, we had just left there and gone on the ferry back. And our ferry was like, but we were so hot, we're all sitting on the top. So now I got it. Look, see, I got my. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, gorgeous. I, I'm that cool today. <laughs> I should do that. There you go. It was such a pretty night. We sat out there by the champagne. I just um, wish you could also like give yourself an outfit. Oh, you wish you could. Oh, that would be nice. Virtual. <laughs> kind of like Snapchat. Like where they like make your skin look nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, this is the first time I've done this. I feel so proud of myself. So, okay. Um, we'll give it one more minute because we have more people on getting in here. Um, we had like, we had like, by the time I got done, we had 22. And what I do when I'm done is I send off, um, I send off a little bit more information about it. Um, I'm really excited you guys are open. I have people going July 21st, they're going to your hotel and then they're going to Conrad. So I'm excited. Um, the only thing they're trying to figure out is one, I have another couple going to get married in Kauai and then they're flying from Honolulu. So they have to get their COVID test in Honolulu. Yeah. And I went, she's like, how do I do that? And I'm like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> so, sure, there's something there. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start. Um, I just want to introduce, um, thank you guys. If people come in, what I'll do is if you have questions, chat, do it and I can ask questions uh, to Aaron. I was lucky enough to meet Aaron when I went on the um, Tahiti Tourism fan, um, gosh, I don't even know what I call it, um, trip that was, wonderful when we went back in December and she hosted us there. We got to eat lunch and I was telling her, you're due, when are you due again? July 29th. July 29th. And so it was really cute. We sat at the table and we're all like, okay, what? You're not drinking or eating tuna. She's like, shh. She just, she's like, um, I, I don't think you've told like your parents. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it, it was kind of what I need to know, but you know, you're feeling so bad those first few weeks that I, you know, yeah. in, a, in a room full of mostly women who are really supportive, it, it yeah. actually had a great support for me being alone yeah. during that time to have you guys. Well, it was a wonderful, I mean, they have this beautiful restaurant we all sat at with our food, and then we went to the champagne bar, which we'll talk about at night, and I got up really early that next morning, um, and did FaceTime with my mom sitting on the beach and it's just a beautiful, beautiful island. And I said this before is I really think that um, so many people go to Maui that live in Phoenix and I have clients all across country. And this is really like two hours farther and it is so much better. <laughs> I, I, mean, I love Hawaii, but I've just been so many times and I'm like, this is just such a better experience. And right now when you're looking at a trip, we want privacy and you want to feel secure and safe. You guys have been, I mean, Tahiti, I mean, French Polynesia has been very, very, they closed in quick. They did. They closed the door really quickly, and you've been very, very strict about who's going to be there, more than almost any other islands out there. So um, I'm excited about it. So with that being said, I'm going to let you be, I'm going to do this, I'm going to, so it's easier, I'm going to make you co-host. Okay. And I've got it recorded, so in case anyone has questions. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask questions in the chat. And then, um, oh, we already have a chat. There we go. Yes. Heather, I know, Maria is so beautiful. It's just, it, it, it was so pretty. And didn't you say that it's the opening scene of Avatar? Like the plane thing or something? No, you didn't say it. The guy that did our boat tour. Yeah. The opening scene of Avatar, when they come in on the helicopter before it becomes a comic or whatever it is. I, I should not be that crass, but. I wouldn't be surprised. It's a, it's a <laughs> big button. I was like, okay. So you go for it. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and just give you guys the presentation, if that's all right. Yes, yeah, great. And then, um, let's see. And then if you have questions, um, feel free to interrupt me or, or let me know. I'm not always that great at following the chat. 
Um, oh, yeah. Okay, great. So let's just put this. Um, okay, so we were kind of already talking about um, how to get there and the amount of time. It's about an eight hour direct flight from Los Angeles or San Francisco to get to the island of Tahiti. So you fly into Papayete. And then from there, there's two different ways to get to the island of Morea. You can um, hop on another flight and fly in, or you can take the ferry. Now the ferry is about um, $12 US to take over. It's um, all you really have to do is get some transportation to the ferry building. You know, the folks who work window are, speak pretty good English. People are very helpful. Um, there's several different ferries that you can choose from. They're all air conditioned. They all have little cafes. And, you know, I used to say that, that they're not, it's not too rocky, but it does kind of depend on the weather and what's going on. They can, you know, if you've got clients who are prone to seasickness, you might want to just advise them to take um, bonine or dramamine or something before they get on that ferry. But it is kind of a, I don't know, it's for first timers, it's a fun experience to take the ferry over because you, you, you may or may not be super uh, impressed with Papayante because it's a little urban. Then once you see the island of Morea getting bigger and bigger and bigger and you're getting closer and you realize really the difference in the landscape, it's kind of a, a moment. So we are the Hilton Morea Lagoon Resort and Spa. We're located at the northernmost point of that heart-shaped island. So you can kind of see um, really well in this image that we're at the very tip of the island. That means we get sunrise, sunset, and a full day of sun. Now the reason, I mean, that's really worth mentioning aside from like it's romantic to have the sunrise and sunset, but when you think about the color of the water being in snorkeling and all the water activities as being one of the top selling points of French Polynesia as a destination, you really want a full day of sun to enjoy that aqua blue water. Because without it, I mean, if you, again, it's an experiential thing, seeing the water without direct sunlight, and seeing it with, but um, if you can just imagine in your minds that it's really, the color is really set off by, by light. So that is one thing that differentiates us from some of our competition. Um, we have, my background that's our sunset and then you can watch the sunrise and there's I've never I mean I've seen tons around the world I've been lucky enough and that there's nothing quite like that it it's is, very I mean, beautiful it's it doesn't look real when you're there you're like wow yeah and actually um sunset happens from this view so this is um you know you see the sun basically setting off to the right like just in Susan's pictures this is the vantage point of her picture, actually. So this is the side of the resort that the sun sets on. Um, and it does, just the view of um, the silhouette of the mountains, it's really breathtaking. So we have a large inventory of overwaters. As you can see here, we're located on one of the lushest coral gardens of the island. One thing in terms of if you're comparing, if you're comparing Morea to Bora Bora, depending on where your guests stay when they make it to Bora Bora, excuse me, um, there's not necessarily going to be good snorkeling there. There's not, a, they don't have as much coral as we do. Um, they have a little bit more variation in the aqua blue, the different colors of the water than Maria does, but you do wanna tell your guests just to get their snorkeling in when they stay with us. All of our non-motorized water activities are included with the resort. So that's snorkel gear, stand-up paddle boards, and kayaks. Um, and then that's just our reception area. This is where you'd be picking up um, a rental car if you had rented one for the afternoon. All of the major, Morea is basically known as the soft adventure island in French Polynesia. So you've got ATV tours, four by four tours, horseback riding, there's now a zip line, 
Um, there's a lovely hike to get up to um, Belvedere Point. There's also Magic Mountain that I went to for the first time in, back in December. I went to the Sun Did. I think they all went up to the top of a mountain they hiked when they were there. I did not hike because, uh, but I did. I took it. I took the four by four tour. So I've done the ATV and the four by four, and they were both excellent. Um, golf too now. I'm sorry. You guys have golf also. Oh yeah, there's a nine hole Jack Nicklaus golf course on Morea. Um, there, yeah, there's just, it's kind of, you name it. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of things to do. So when you're staying in Morea, you do want to get off the resort, go explore the interior of the island. Morea has a great infrastructure um, with bike lanes, new roads. I don't know when they were last paved, but they're basically brand new. And again, when you make it to Bora Bora, the infrastructure is not particularly good. Um, I did a circle island tour there and it takes you past like the dump in Bora Bora. You know, it's just not what you would expect for that destination. Really, Bora Bora is um, water activities. Enjoy the, the, beautiful, the beautiful water there. Um, but, but it's more of a stay on the resort have a you know fancy tropical beverage sitting next to the pool enjoy the spa facility you know it's it's a little bit more you're stuck on your resort a little bit more when you're in Bora. In Morea you actually have that opportunity to get off the resort and really enjoy the, the beauty of the interior of the island and not just the the surrounding waters. We <sighs> Sorry, I get winded really easily because I'm carrying that baby and he's just like pressing. He like, likes to lodge himself underneath the right side of my rib cage. So if I get breathy, that's, it's, it's just, it's the baby. <laughs> he's eating my lunches and <laughs> keeping me from being able to breathe properly. My baby's taking all of my money and he lives about four feet away from me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have that to look forward to in my future. If you grow up someday. Yeah. I hope. Um, so several things have been uh, reno completely renovated or renewed or, and I'll try and remember to, to mention all of those, but the pool was completely retiled. Awesome. Last year. So, and we got new pool furniture as well. Lounge furniture at the same time. So we have two basic room categories and within those categories are other categories, but it's basically everything in the garden um, comes with a private plunge pool. So they're garden pool bungalows and everything on the water is essentially an overwater um, with the glass or viewing panel set to the floor and the decks that go straight into the water. So this is an image of the layout of our lead in category um, garden pools and these come two by two so they're duplexes they still both have those private pools um, they're I think somewhere in the high um, like 80 square feet or 75 square feet um, that's a little lower than I thought it was anyway they're a little bit smaller than the, the deluxes and they don't quite have the same we didn't stay amount. Of no, okay. Yeah, we stayed in yes. the next one. Yep. Yeah, so this is the interior. Um, and the nice thing is, even though they do share a wall, it's the bathroom wall, not the bedroom wall. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're booking honeymooning clients or, you know, the headboard's going to be knocking, I would always just say, book them in the deluxes and they don't have to worry about having neighbors. Um, but they're still very nice rooms. The bathroom. Oh, loved it. Yeah, these are, the only difference with these is they, um, they don't have the clawfoot tubs. So every other room basically in the resort, uh, comes with a clawfoot instead of, instead of these ones. Um, but these are nice as well. It's, and the, and we have rain showers in all of our rooms as well. So just a lot of marble um exotic woods in the room 
Um, and so everything that's located in our garden, by the way, our garden is very well manicured. It's shaded. You know, the resort itself feels intimate and uh, it never feels crowded. So it's got this great mix of intimacy, yet you're not, you're not, um, you're not going to get lonely there either. And you're not going to have to walk a half an hour in the sun to get from your garden pool room to the ocean or to any of our main facilities. So I was going to ask on that because I was, that's one of the things I really like. How many rooms are there? There's a hundred and, I don't want to misspeak, um, 103. And roughly half of those are over the water and half of those are in the garden. Yeah, I would say that's one of the best features of your resort is that it did not, the lush garden was beautiful. You did not feel far. Um, all the other resorts we stayed at, you did. I mean, you walk, 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 walk. And then if you're like, so if, if you're on a different pontoon, you have to walk back to the middle and then go where yours was here and then it went out. Yeah, and you really notice it on the fam trips because you're going to up each other's rooms and you're, but yeah, it is. My key to and I'm like, oh my God, I got to walk all the way back to the lobby. I was at the Four Seasons. And I'm yeah. like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. But it is, I love that intimate feeling without it feeling like you were on top of people. Yeah. And you probably had the most lush part of it. And yet I couldn't hear that. I was right next to the pool, but I couldn't hear him. Yeah. But I was right next to the lobby so I could go spend money if I wanted. So I love, I absolutely love that. I think I was in room 11. Ah, thank you. Yeah, I think so too. And yeah. it also doesn't feel like you're in Disneyland. I mean, the resort itself, it's the only five star on the island of Morea. And it, I mean, it's not like the five star experience you're going to have in Bora. That's like a different caliber. But what it means is that you, it has all of the amenities that Americans and the quality of service that Americans are looking for. But you don't feel like you're in Disneyland. It doesn't feel like you're in just some homogenous you know, um, it feels like you're in Tahiti, which is nice. For me, when I travel, I want to feel a little bit that I'm having an immersive experience while still having the things there available that I'm looking for um, as, you know, as kind of like a spoiled U.S. traveler. <laughs> The Europeans are a little bit more, you know, you can get away with a little bit more with the Europeans, I find, but, but Americans are really, you know, show up expecting. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, so this is our deluxe. These are freestanding. They're larger. Um, they have um, also the private pool. I don't know this if you can I see have. if they're the right. <laughs> and two sliding glass doors. So it has like an L-shaped, you can see it better here. It has this L-shaped deck that wraps um, not all the way around the bungalow, but halfway around with this teak wall that, um, that kind of shields the plunge pool from the pathway. So we didn't want it feeling like Guantanamo. We didn't want to wrap that wall all the way around because some of these rooms have ocean views or otherwise um, beautiful views, so we didn't to lose that. But we did wanna make sure that there was enough privacy there to where couples could enjoy that plunge pool. And Susan, you were mentioning that this is one of your favorite rooms. Oh, it was. And it. it's, you know, it's great, even if you have clients who can afford to do the overwater experience, you know, from Tahiti, Morea to Bora Bora, you'd be surprised how many people come back to me and tell me that this was their favorite room overall, because you don't, you know, you have that extra privacy. I'm not going in the ocean after dark. I'm squeamish. And you want to be able to see what's coming to get me. Yeah. Once we get there, that's a whole nother reason. Even though the black sharks are not aggressive, once you see them, it does make you think twice. But you can this privacy and the way that your room is set up that is just so relaxing. And I'm not just saying that. I just really love this. And then I would stand over on the other side and people would walk by. I'm like, hey. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It, it's really set up well. And I do like, um, and like I said, it's closed. So if I wanted to walk to the beach, I could. Um, I do love the overwater experience. I don't want to be insensitive to those who haven't had it. But I like that kind of room or a beachfront room better. Yeah. And again, you can enjoy this plunge pool after dark. 
you know, dinner, a couple of cocktails and a dip. Whereas yes. the only thing I'm taking a dip in in my overwater is going to be in the bathtub after the sun oh. goes down. So, and I do love, I never fail to take a dip in this bathtub. It's so romantic. It's like something out of a, you know, out of a novel. Anyway, we have two of these garden pool suites. They're sort of the home away from home uh, experience. It's basically a one bedroom with two full baths. This is the only room on property that can accommodate a family of four. So they, they do tend to kind of go fast. Um, as well as our three lagoon bungalows. These are a little bit more like the intercoms over waters where it's half on land, half on water. So this is kind of our lead in over water room, but again, because we only have three of them, which they're there, they are right there on the beach. So they tend to go really quickly. And then our over waters. So this is just a view of the layout. All of the over waters share the same interior. Um, with the glass reviewing panel set into the floor and the um, split level deck, which is quite nice because we just this past spring um, redid all of the thatched roofs on our overwaters and all of the decks. So the decks on all of our overwaters have been completely redone and the thatching comes and gives a little bit of shade to those lounge chairs and that table that you see on the upper half. But then if you want to sunbathe or, you know, just be close to the water, there's enough room on the, on the bottom. There's also a working shower there. Um, and this, so this is actually a picture of the old decking, but it looks, it looks the same. It's just, it's just new. Because oh, they had just started working on it when we got there and they were, yeah. were full. Yeah. Oh, look at yeah. that. That's so uh, that, that's when you look at that water and literally it does not look real. Yeah, it doesn't. I had an agent tell me that um, her trip to our property was the best online date she'd ever been on because it was prettier than the photos. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. I don't know what that says about online dating, but I do, you do, yeah, once you see this, it's just the entire destination is kind of like that. It's okay. just... Um, it looks like it's been photoshopped. Oh my gosh. And there is, there's so much coral around there, which is so different than some, and there, if there's no coral, there's no fish. I mean, the water can be as pretty as you want, but nothing's going to come by you. Yeah. I've actually seen more marine life year over year visiting this property than less. Oh, yeah. um, but that's a good sign. We do have a coral bio rock preservation program. So we do take care of our coral. I also like to point out before I move completely on to the restaurants that, and this actually isn't the best photo for showcasing this, but the, um, the, the island behind our resort is pristine, untouched, land before time, mountainous, dramatic region. Some of our competition, and I won't name names, because Morea is inhabited by Tahitians who take the ferry back and forth to the main island to work, some of the other properties, when you look back over the resort, you can see dwellings on the side of the mountain. And it's, well, our view is, let me just say, it's just very pretty. So that when you're looking out into the water, of course it's gorgeous, but also the walk back from the end of the pontoon deck to property is like. You feel like you're on your own island. You, you do. And, and yet you're on your own island, but you can get in a car and go to the local areas and eat and enjoy that. But it does, it has a very private, quiet, wind blowing, you know, feeling when you're like, wow, you really felt like that was the only resort that felt that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's definitely, I mean, you'll even hear our, comp, our competitors talking about really being the best on the island. Um, our, um, I'm trying to think of, of our comp set. So if we tell has a longer beach, yep. natural beach, which on one hand, well, it makes it natural, you know, if that's kind of what you're going for. We've actually, I mean, our beach isn't unnatural. We dredged our sand out and brought it in. So our sand is nice and fluffy and like there isn't, it's not compacted and there isn't like a lot of coral and stuff in it. So but it is shorter than the Sophie Tell Beach. 
Um, but those are a couple of differences too. Intercon is actually closed. I know, I wonder what's gonna happen, who's gonna buy it? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they gave it a year and, re and just reopened with different staff. They were having some staffing problems. I don't know if they, go there they were on strike when we were there. Yeah, they were on strike. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, it's a good property. I like I like your guys better, but it's good when you're combining intercons for a value. So yeah, got a totally it's different good, vibe. Yeah. Yum. Mm. So this is our breakfast buffet. Um, we did a soft refurb on the interior of this restaurant. Ari Vahine, it's our main restaurant. It turns into a little bit more of an upscale dining experience in the evening. It used to have tiled floors. They've um, they've put in wooden flooring and changed the light fixtures and the furniture. So it's a little nicer than it was before. Um, our breakfast buffet gets rave reviews. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, there is an agricultural center on the island that makes jams. Oh yeah. And we ha we feature them in our. We also have like an omelet, you know, making area where you can have fresh omelets and, and whatnot but the jams from the local agricultural school are phenomenal yeah and i've never sold a package without breakfast and yeah. Yeah, you can sit right here um well this is down but it's like you sit up there and we did a dinner it was actually classic vacations was there because we were all there for a conference they were at the other long table and we were at our table and the food was just i mean you just it does like i said it doesn't look real it was so beautiful. And then there's the bar on the other side, which of course we had to go find. So, which is kind of a sunken bar. Um, and, but the breakfast in the morning was great. And then this is where I met you. <laughs> yeah. So this is um, Ratui, our beachside grill. It's open air. We just revamped the menu. Our chef has been, he, first he did our main restaurant and kind of brought it more, he made it more upscale and more creative. And, and then he's made some changes to the menu here as well. Um, it's, it, this is definitely more casual and you're going to find more of the sort of like the burgers and the, the com American comfort food, um, some of that on the menu, as well as some, some great, uh, Tahitian dishes. Like this restaurant has my favorite Poisson Cru that I've ever had. It's like, yeah. it's amazing. It's really good. Um. Do you know what that is? Does anyone know what that is? I've never heard of it. I'm not well cultured. Oh, oh, it's like um, it's fresh tuna. Oh, with yeah. oh that that oh my gosh, that was my well, mixed with coconut milk and some citrus and like that was amazing. Thinly sliced carrots and cucumbers and it's just like this fresh, like zingy coconutty. Oh, that that's um, the best. And I would agree, you had it the best. We had it so much by the time I got home, I think I'd had it every single yeah. day. For yeah. Days. <laughs> if you have to, you will be offered it during, during your entire trip, Poisson Crew. But if you can, save yourself for Ratui's Poisson Crew because it's the best. That's the one that you want to be able to enjoy before you've gotten tired of it. <laughs> but uh, if you're on a fam, you may not always have an option. Um, but then, so... Our, we have an overwater crepery as well, and this is definitely the most uh, unique uh, place to dine on the island of Morea. It's located on the overwater pontoon deck. There are sweet and savory crepes, as well as champagne cocktails. And uh, once it starts to get dark, the black tip sharks start swimming around underneath. It looks a little bit like a, you know, um, like a 007 a villain, you know, would tie you up and drop you in. <laughs> kind of. A, oh, great! It's a living aquarium, and the black tip sharks, uh, even though they can look a little menacing, are not aggressive. So I've actually swam with them, but it's just so cool to see them. They basically just make laps underneath the overwater deck. So you're eating your crepes or having your champagne cocktail and watching these these sharks. Um, yes, I, I, I will. I will post this. I have a video on my YouTube channel, and I will also post my photo of us all sitting there because that's where I got. That's why my photo sideways, the one of me standing, because that's the sunset and everything there. And the crepes are yummy, and we all sat out there and laughed. And I'm like, 
how cool is that when people come back? Like we went out there before dinner, sat out there, watched the sunset, and then, you know, enjoyed, and then they turn the lights on and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and that it's not very far to walk back to the restaurant. And I, I do, I really like that. It was my favorite. Yeah, it's nice to, you know, we have three, three restaurants that are open nightly, um, as well as the, um, the Polynesian Buffet and Dance Show twice a week. I'm not sure with our reopening if we'll be having, that's actually, nobody asked it, but that's a good question that I need to ask my boss is whether or not we're going to be gotcha. yeah. at the shows and the buffets. Um, but, but when those are happening, they're great. And the fact that you have three different restaurants in the evening to choose from is great. Although, again, one nice thing about Morea is, you know, there are several different restaurants on the island that will actually come pick your guests up, take them to dinner, drop them back off at the resort free of charge. Um, so you yeah. do have that opportunity to dine off property if you want to. Yes. Now I like to go to Ari Vahine, have a fancy meal, and then make it more of a date night and end up with dessert crepes and champagne at Ratui afterwards. Yeah. Um, is kind of like my my perfect date on the property. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, it's it's really tasty stuff too. And our chef Pappy Claude is like he's a ham. He will he will ham it up. Um, he's even taken me behind the line and shown me how to make a crepe, which I think he's probably willing to do with guests as well if they were to ask him. You know, like. How so, Peppy Claude, how do you make a crepe? He'll put a little chef hat on them and and embarrass them when it's more mm -hmm. it's more difficult to do than it looks. So, yeah, we weren't there. Oh, that's it. we weren't there for the show. That was not the night we were there. It's fun. There's um, always a fire dance as well. Is that down by the spa area? Yes. Okay. Yeah. When they, the fire, the fire show actually is down by the spa. Okay. Oh, and at, so our spa was also. Re completely renovated in the last year. So it's not a huge spa, but it's what we have is quality. Our um, massage therapists are amazing. They're amazing. Um, and again, as kind of a first stop on a multi-island Tahiti itinerary, book your, book your clients a massage. And when you look at the flight schedules, many of them, um, they either force you to do an overnight in Tahiti or they have you showing up bright and early in the morning. Um, so we have people who show up sometimes on property at like 9 a.m. And even though our check-in time is like 3 p.m., even if we get them in at one, you're still looking at a number of hours where they're probably gonna be tired. It's a warm climate. I always just advise, you know, if you have clients that are willing to do it, Book them a little treatment. The, the spa is completely air conditioned. There's showers. Um, there's a rest and relaxation room after they have whatever treatment they, they want. So it's a good way to kick off that trip and it's a good place to put your cranky travelers <laughs> while they're you know waiting for their room to be prepared instead of sitting them in our lobby where they just stare angrily at our front desk who's, you know, <laughs> and I mean the last few years we've been at capacity a lot which is great for us um, but it has made it harder to get people in extra extra early so this has kind of been an important like little tip um, but these days you know of course with everything going on I don't anticipate us being at capacity like uh, you know who knows? So maybe getting them in earlier won't be as big of an issue now, but here's hoping it will be. Um, we also have a 24 hour air conditioned gym and with new equipment and tennis courts. So, um, you know, if you have, I used to joke that, you know, we have this on offer, but nobody ever uses it. But actually the last few times I've been on property, I've, I've seen honeymooning couples trying to keep their wedding bods, and I've seen 60 plus year olds who are just like committed to their workout regime. And, you know, so 
people actually do. Uh, and then we have lots of romantic, different types of romantic inclusions. Um, you can book with us if you've got couples that are interested in that. And the sky in French Polynesian Maria is amazing. And then here are our offers. Um, these are going to be the same going forward into 2021. We've essentially kept our same contracts because um, for ease of loading and whatnot with our wholesale partners. So whoever you book through should have these loaded already. Um, yeah. I've been able to look through June of 2021. Yeah. 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 The, and the contracts are just now going out. So depending on which partner and how fast or slow their department is at uploading our contracts, it may or may not be available because it's just like we we're just releasing things. Now that we know that we're um, going to be open and things are moving forward, we're finally kind of getting to some of this. Our um, we're in the process of updating our cancellation policy to be more flexible um, and possibly also a, a, a special that would include um, a free room upgrade for bookings between now and like the end of August, maybe yeah. September. Yeah. So keep an eye out, that should be coming out yeah. um, soon. Uh, I'll look, there's been, I, I will be honest, I've been booking, I've booked about four in the last two weeks for French Polynesia and the rates are unbelievable. Uh, which is great. I mean, even which direction? <laughs> like good or bad? <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's as, a, as someone who hasn't booked in three months, it's been fun to book, but it's also been like, I love when I can get people to a big, a place that they want to go, um, you know, and to have people be able to dream about you know, I, I see this place, to be honest, people always say, oh, this is my dream vacation. And I, that's why I bring up Maui and I go, I have so many clients that go to Maui every year, every year, every year. And I'm like, really? Like, yeah, I go to Kauai at least, but they go to the same place. And I'm like, just go a little farther. Yeah. This isn't, especially Morea, it doesn't have to be out of your experience. Um, for what you want to do and it is i mean it is we spent the most time on that island and we really really enjoyed it and it is um you know i i, I we didn't fly there we took the ferry both ways it's super easy cars come on and off people walk we sat on the top some of people sat inside in the air conditioning i was too hot i wanted to win so yeah um, yeah it's fun. you get to watch that you can see the ocean you can see both islands I and mean, you can see between papiete and morea they're right there you can yeah. see yeah each island and you know, the, um, the price different isn't that, isn't that much when, when you compare us, actually, it's surprising. Right. And I think part of that is, um, you know, a lot of, even though we don't have um, all inclusive properties per se, and, and we do have half board and full board if you're interested in, in including more in terms of, of the meal plan. However, you know, you get, um, like the free non-motorized water activities. I, when I was in Oahu, oh gosh, was it two years ago now? It was for a Tahiti tourism event actually. And my, and I brought my husband along and we ended up spending hundreds of dollars on renting, you know, a few paddle boards for, for a few hours. And then you have the resort fees piled on top of that. And then exactly. the yeah. cost of food there is also, I mean, you know, it's yeah, so the cost of food, I would say is comparable, but like we picked up a Joe and I picked up, you know, a couple of bottles of alcohol at the airport and yeah. room, and I was like, okay, you know, this is, um, there's ways to do this. Even if you start, and I'll say this, a lot of people don't like to start in Papiate. I was blown away by how much I loved it. And you could end and do, you know, three nights in Morea and end it there. You can do a lot of activities. There's just, it's just such a beautiful Island. Our pool company here is Marea Pool Company. <laughs> uh, because they, they went there on their honeymoon and they absolutely love it. It's their favorite island. And I'm like, I'm so glad because I think that while I love Bora Bora and I can't say I don't, um, I think it overshadows the beauty of what Marea offers. 
And I will say, my sister went there. Some people have called it boring, boring, because if you go there too long, there isn't a lot to do. You really go there to be alone and stay at your resort. I mean, and you, you know your clients and you qualify your clients. If you've got clients who are really into having a she-she bells and whistles experience where they go to the spa every day and they, you know, just want to enjoy beautiful facilities, yeah. that's for sure Bora Bora. But if you've got folks who are a little bit more adventury and want to be somewhere that feels authentic and unique, yeah. Morena, like ticks those boxes a little bit more. And I, I forgot to mention our mini bar is included once a day. Oh, that's right. Yep. So and you're you're guess, in your room too. Yeah. Um, we've got Hinato beers, um, sparkling water, um, that's the Coke, Diet Coke. Yeah. I mean, it's beer, but like, it's still free and people appreciate it. Oh, totally. And we do, um, again, I'm not sure about our happy hour right now going forward. In right. terms of social distancing, I'm not sure we're actually encouraging folks to to line up at the bar, but um, yeah. we did have the longest happy hour on the island, and I'm sure we'll be bringing that back um, at some point with two for one drinks and and stuff like that. So we are calls outside what like Air Tahiti Nui has sent out about getting on the plane and having to have a 72 hour or less COVID test. Are there any other things that you know that are um, you know are people who are looking at going there should know about what the changes are right now? Nothing that's prohibitory. Okay. But I would say um, you may find some differences from resort to resort as to how they're treating um, COVID concerns. Yeah. And actually, this is kind of my question to you guys as well. Um, do you think your clients are going to want to see that resorts are taking social distancing measures, staff wearing masks, or do you think they're going to want to not have to deal with that stuff and forget about it while they're on property? Because I, in Tahiti, they've done such an amazing job at protecting themselves that I, I'm not always hearing the same amount of vigilance that I think right. in the US, especially in some cities, we've been having and I'm a little bit afraid that we're going to get some clients right um, we're in the midst of working out in terms of the Hilton Marea like how far to go with you well, know I saw I saw Hilton on TV the dad and he showed how like as a brand they were using these seals mm -hmm. seal the door and then the room would be sealed and then they would not come and like clean the room. Right. Unless you ask them. They which didn't I was, demand. And that was the, and I'll be honest, that was the first brand out of any of the hotel chains that I saw, but I'm sure they all did it, but it, I was watching like TMZ or something. Right. Like, just flipped through the channel and went, oh, hey, I wonder what they're doing. Cause I've seen so much COVID come through my emails that I probably deleted them. So, um, but I would say like we have, we're a mix right now. We have clients and we have um, some travel agents. People who are traveling right now, who are willing to travel in 2020, do not want masks. Right. People who are looking in 21, mm -hmm. uh, want to be secure a little bit more. But people who are like, I have clients that are going July 1st. Uh -huh. like, oh, we're going to have to go through that line. I heard the line in Jamaica is horrible. Blah, blah, blah. They're irritated. They think it's a total waste. They think it's unsafe. Where my husband won't get on an airplane. So, um, and is nervous about me getting on an airplane while I go to a conference because we are, um, I have to fly. He's like, I don't, I'm not worried about the resort, but it's getting on the airplane. Oh, and then Heather, uh, the, uh, the French Polynesia opens on July 15th, correct? Yeah, first say. flights. Um, yeah, every hotel is a little different, but I have people going to your hotel July 21st. Yeah, that's like our first day. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's going, she's going to the Garden View, and then she's going over to Bora Bora. <laughs> Yeah, I think we open on July 20th. Yeah. First flights right. from ATN are either flying on July 14th or 15th, I believe. Um, I'm not sure about... French B, just in case anyone, French B is uh, Airlines out of France that goes out of San Francisco. It's got a totally different vibe than Air Tahiti Nui because everyone's like, well, I'm coming out of Dallas. I'm like, you're still going to LA. So, you know, and you really, I think ideally, 
you want to fly, I would fly over, um, I'd fly overnight and spend the night um, versus fly over and get in the morning, but a lot of people don't like that. I just, I get tired. I'm older. My body hurts after sitting on a plane for eight hours. I'd go to a hotel and then get up the next morning and get on a ferry and then go over and enjoy it or spend a couple days in Papiete. And Papiete is a great place. I did a beautiful tour right in the end and I literally felt like I was in Jurassic Park. There's shopping there, wonderful restaurants. And I think that's the other thing, like you said, with Morea, you really want to experience the restaurants. And they're very unique. And I, if you didn't hear this, she says they come and they pick you up and they'll take you to the restaurant and take you back. And that, you don't get that. I mean, like I said, you go to Bora Bora. I'm at the Four Seasons. I'm eating there and staying there. I mean, you can pay a ferry for some of these to go into the inland, to go to like Bloody Mary's, a famous restaurant. It is a ton of money. Yeah. I mean, like 20 bucks each way per person. Yeah. And then you got to go pay to eat. But then yeah. you gotta go back. And I'm like, that's not vacation to me. So um, it's a really fun experience that it's really easy to do. But yeah, so it's opening up, um, and like I said, there are some sales. She gave us some ideas. If you guys are interested, if you have any questions, I'm going to email all of you anyway, but there are some great opportunities for you guys to do this. We do have rates right now. I'm almost positive I, we have your rates right now. I book a lot with Classic, and I'll tell you why. So as we went through COVID, and I know I've got my Classic rep on here too, but there's a couple companies that I'll book with now, and the reason is when you go through things like this and you find that people are getting stuck with future credits only, they're not honoring what the hotel's saying. So if you guys said, hey, no worries, we'll give you your money back, but the vendor didn't, well, first of all, my client's unhappy. And then they're stuck with a credit and maybe they lost their job and they're like, I'm never going back. And I've got to try to fix a trip. And so I'm looking at companies that are like, hey, we want to work with our partners. We want to give you what the hotels are giving you. And we also want to work with companies that are willing to sell, cancel for any reason insurance. Because that's the only insurance out there that's going to deal with COVID. There's no insurance that's going to cover it. So you got to have canceled for any reason. And so you sell that and then you go, hey, look, you want options, right? I want to push a button and you get your money back. That's what you want. So um, I don't want you guys to cancel. But if we do get this second wave, I God, I hope not. But if it comes back in January and all of a sudden we have all these trips booked and you guys go back to, when well, I got to book it for 22 and something else happens, there's a great option when you can, we can go, not a problem. We're going to cancel and you're going to get your money back except for the insurance. So we really partner with people for that reason, because I want my job to be easier and I want you guys to have options. Um, but with this being said, I've talked enough. Um, anybody have any questions? We talked about the ferry. The ferry is about 30, 35 minutes, you think? Um, 20 to 30. Yeah. Depending on, there's one that's like more high speed than the other. That one, the red one. Yeah, I saw the red. Yeah, we didn't do that one. Um, it's really easy. So if you land at like five in the morning, you take a private shuttle, you go over to the ferry building. They even have a little coffee shop there. Yeah. Yeah, you get over there. Um, my clients that are coming on the 21st, I scheduled both of them a massage when they got there. And I said, look, you don't realize how tired you are. They're older than I am. I said, you have nothing to do. I mean, you can go and swim. Yeah. I mean, oh. everyone's welcome to use our facilities. But yeah. But it's a great way to feel better when you arrive. And yeah. uh, so that's a great thing. Anyone else have any questions that you would have that you have about Morea in general or about this resort? You look really cute there, Erin. I've done my job. <laughs> well, I thank you guys. I thank you all for coming too. And Erin, you're what you said July 29th? Yeah. Oh, uh, so he'll be a Leo, right? He's gonna be a lion. Yeah, yeah it's July 23rd, so I can't wait. I can't wait to see his unique name. Oh, yeah. well, we'll see. We'll let, you, we'll let you name him. Those husbands, you know, they think they have an opinion. Right, he got to name our, we just rescued a bunny. I found a bunny on the street. You rescued a bunny? They're a lot of work. So he named our bunny Broadbaster, so that's, that's our creative name. <laughs> Rock Bastard. What is that? I don't know. He just literally made it up. Oh, I was like, is that like some musical thing that we don't know? <laughs> you I know? know, like a composer's name. I was like, or an artist or, or, or Amadeus. <laughs> he pulled it out of his head. And so now we have Rod Bastard, the bunny. That's awesome. Is he working right now? What's happening with his job? He, he's working. Things have slowed down.